All right, guys, go to Boy32 here, check it out. We're sitting in the Freedom Studio, and then on the table here in front of me, I've got this really cool deal from the guys over there at EP Innovations. Now, I will tell you this, uh, Elster's Todd, Mr. Todd, is probably one of my go-to guys when it comes to uh, just trying to figure out how to do a lot of reloading. I mean, right here, and I haven't given up on this. Now that we've got some weather that's worth the crap, this is the six millimeter arc. And I'm looking forward to going ahead and testing out some different loads and bringing my reloading bench. We're gonna set it up over here so that we can do the reloading while we're out of town. And I have a range that's only 15 minutes away that has 100 yards, 200, 300. So it's well worth it just for testing loads. And then we can go out the distance at the long range out to 1,000 yards. Now here's the thing, uh, annealing. What is annealing? Well, annealing, if you could think about it, this is a piece of brass, it's a piece of metal. And over a period of time with reloading the, the case neck right here, it will actually expand and contract, expand and contract, expand and contract over the time when you're resizing, bumping the shoulders back and things like that. And what that does is it weakens the brass because it has lost its elasticity. Okay, that's my best description on how I can figure it out. But in any case, what we're gonna do is annealing is heating and tempering, or not tempering, but heating and relieving the stress in the neck and the shoulder, uh, creating a more longevity in this thing. Now, uh, there are a bunch of different guys out there to produce these kind of things, but uh, Todd is a very dear friend of mine, and he sent this out to the channel to test. Now, the cool thing about it right now, you've got just a little simple one thing at a time, and he is working in conjunction with another awesome YouTuber, big YouTuber. I'm not at liberty to say his name at this point in time, but there will be an option for an auto feeder, not, not a tray, but an auto feeder, kind of similar to something that you would see on a Dillon 650 kind of thing with a, oh, it's really cool, and when it comes out, you guys will know about it, but it'll be a, an add-on to this. Now, let's talk about this guy real quickly. Uh, the unique part about this is you can do everything from 223, 250 BMG with this guy. Uh, it has a center bolt right here, and what you do is you bring this out like this, and then the rotating disc, not the drum, oh, but the rotating disc comes out. Let's see here, what in the world? Oh, okay, well, never mind, I've got to loosen up the gate here. So this is what keeps the uh, piece of brass in order, and then you can bring this guy out, and I'm doing this from behind it, in order to go ahead and size it accordingly. So say for instance, this is the new 556 brass that I was running this last week. What I wanna do is I wanna set this machine up to run that 556 brass. So this has a gate that uh, fits, well, hold on, what am I doing wrong here? Okay, this thing is attached to there. So what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and size this up so that this piece of brass right here lays in here and there's an set of instructions but you know as a man we don't look at these things as a matter of pride so what we do is we adjust the gate right here so that the drum can spin and then what I want to do is I want to position that piece of brass I'm going to loosen this wing nut up all right so that the neck of this thing will I gotta keep, keep this guy loose. So you can tell I, I, I haven't read the instructions, but I've played with it. I've melted some brass with it, and that's not the goal. <laughs> what we wanna do. All right, so I'm just bringing this thing out enough to where our brass right here is being pushed out enough so when we put the torch to it, by the way, here's the torch, and <laughs> amazingly enough, uh, I have a stove top in this apartment it's gas. So I can light this thing and I didn't do it last night. But a minute ago, we're gonna minute a couple minutes, we're gonna go over some other items. So once we get that piece of brass out far enough, what I'm gonna do is one, I want to adjust this little rod thing right here. Okay, that's the gate, and then we're gonna put that right here. Now it also comes with this really cool looking little deal here. This is the power supply. And in a minute, I'm going to have to figure out how to plug this thing in and make it run. I've got a power right over there. So what we have is a, a little power adapter, and it plugs in 
right here in the back. Now this is a pretty neat little deal. Now before we do that, what I want to do is I want to take these little legs, the little leggy things, and I want to place that on this uh, propane tank. Now also included is the little uh, valve here for the torch uh, with the head, but you got to provide your own propane. So we're going to tighten this thing up enough to where I know it's not going to slide around. I've got both six millimeter arc brass, but for our example, we're going to show you this. Now these are brand new pieces of brass and these have been washed. I'm not sure why. I think I let the uh, lemon juice in there for too long. <laughs> anyway, but what we want to do is I'm going to place this thing on here and we want that flame to go right up on that neck. Now, I'm not a professional annealer. I never have been claimed to be. I don't really care to be one. But this, again, if you've got, like, say, for instance, six millimeter arc brass, you want that stuff to last as long as you possibly can. Simply because there ain't a whole lot of it out there. Um, who was it that said they went over to Bud's gun shop today and bought a bunch of uh, six millimeter arc? Yeah, I do read the, in, read the comments. All right, so we got that thing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this deal in on the back. And the cool thing is, is that you have an adjustment here. This is just the revolutions per minute, okay? And the nice thing is they did a lot of testing on that just to make sure that they had it right. Let's go ahead and plug this thing in real quick and I'm gonna show you that. Okay. All right, so now what you have is a display screen right here. I'm not sure what that is. I think it's a reset button or something. But on the display screen right here, you can see the numbers go increase. All right. Now, one of the things that you will notice, wow, it goes like that. So what you want to do is when that one is getting ready, we'll go ahead and we'll put this guy on there. Now, wait a minute. You got to adjust the gate on this thing too. Stand by. So what you do is you bring this guy out. This is cool. You guys are learning with me. And you got to bring it out a little longer. There we go. So we'll go ahead and put the next one on there. And that guy will, no, a little longer. Because you want to match up this little plate right here with that guy right there. Like that. And then you, it is annealing and it will rotate around. And what you want to do is we're going to use the globe method. Now the globe method is a little bit different from what I was using at first because I was using the melt method. You don't want to use the melt method. Not a very good option. So let's go ahead and make sure that these are on. Now that's the six millimeter arc. And we'll probably have to extend that out a little bit to be proficient on it. But right now what we want to do is I want to use this thing just for the two, two, three. Now, here's the thing. You need to make sure that this guy right here is suspended up enough to where it will allow that case to freely rotate. All right, we're looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and light this bad boy up and we'll anneal a few pieces and see how it's going. Here we go. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I have the torches lit. We're gonna go ahead and position this thing to where it's sitting right there. Now, here's the thing. I've been told by Todd is a lot of some people were concerned that this thing is going to get real hot and ruin your your stuff. I don't think so. Maybe we want to speed that up a little bit. Put that next one in there. Yeah. There we go. Now we're going to run some, just show you guys what it looks like, and then what we're going to do because we're not wanting to destroy the brass, we're gonna turn the lights down real low. Here we go. And in the dark, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna turn this one light off real quick so we can get a good example of what's going on here. I'm gonna slow it down just a little bit. We're gonna overdo one. I wanna show you what it looks like when we overdo one. So we slow it down and it'll get real, real pink. And that's not what you want. See how that's getting hot? Yeah, that ain't what we want, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and that's what we were doing at first. But what we're gonna do, put it up to about 25. 
revolutions a minute, or whatever that's supposed to be. All right, and that might be a little too slow too. Hold on one second. Let's do the, the blackout method. All right, here we go. We are in the dark. You guys can see the flame. We're going to drop it in there. Come on. Go for it. So I know that in the dark, we probably need, oh, speed that up a little bit. So let's see, we're at 28 revolutions. A little slower than that. Let's go 25. That's perfect. I think let's go 25. And see, this thing is cool to the touch, too. It's amazing. It does not conduct what, the heat. Perfect. Okay, so I think even 26 may be the perfect adjustment. What do you guys think? Hold on. Yep, that's the guy I want to see. Now, what I want to do is when we have that, I'm going to go ahead and put this brass over here. I'll use that later on just for some, some plinking ammo. But let's do this. I want to show you what... I got it on this. I want to show, oh, it also includes this tray. Well, let's go ahead and run a few pieces of the uh, 556. We'll do three pieces of that. And then we will bump it up and run some of the, uh, the six millimeter arc because it is brand new brass. So to change it up, all we got to do, and this is going to be fun, I'm just going to move this guy out of the way. I'm going to probably burn my fingers if we try to do it this early. How about if we do it just like this? I'm going to loosen this guy up. We're going to bring it out a little bit and up. And then let's go ahead and turn it off. Let's remember 26, okay? And then I'm going to bring this guy up where it should just actually it should be almost the same it's a little shorter yeah we'll gonna bring her up about that there and we'll bring the gate up to match let's go ahead and run that around that yeah, works all right but we still want to bring this guy up a little bit more a little bit more and that's easy. All right, so I'll go ahead and bring this thing up just a tad to make sure that we're going to be in there. Oops, nope, not quite. It's kind of cool you guys are seeing the mistakes that I'm making. There, perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and bring it to 26 revolutions. And... We can bring it back on here. That's a new piece. And we'll put that torch right back where we want it. I want the tip of the blue flame to be right there. Okay? So there we go. Adjust that to where it's evenly hit the neck and the, uh, the shoulder. Let's do it one more time. This is stuff that's fun. And I hope you're enjoying this because I've had this thing for a while now, but I really have had trouble trying to figure out how to properly illustrate it to you guys. There we go. We'll do two more pieces. And those are perfect. And this is brand new brass, so it's going to show how nicely it is annealed. One more piece, and we'll call it a day. And the cool thing is, no, it does not overheat. And that's it. All right. Now I want to show you how fast it'll go also. Isn't that cool? Alright, let's move this thing out of the way. But I want to show you how nice woo these pieces of brass are annealed. Oh, 
it's not quite as hot. But they are perfect all the way across. And like I said, there are several other companies that make annealers, but I will tell you this, this is 260 bucks and change out. You can get a nice branding while you're doing that. <laughs> but that's what they look like. Not bad. This is my good friend, uh, Todd Elsters. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate in leaving any questions down below. I'm gonna put the link in the first line of the uh, description of this video down below. But today, I, you know, I don't know if you would wanna use it on 556 five, brass, cause I've got like five, five gallon buckets of this stuff laying around and nobody seems to wanna pick it up. But if you've got 338 Lapua, uh, 65 Creedmoor, stuff that you really want to save. The brass, like I said, six millimeter arc. This stuff is expensive and it's not available as much as you'd like it. Fortunately, I got 300 pieces of brand new brass and we're gonna get to the annealing here pretty soon. It's Coda Boy 32 if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already done so, support red, white, and blue. God bless America, God bless men, women in uniform, 24 seven for our freedom. This freedom is not free. Whew, that's what I said. Long word. Long video. Y'all be good. I am out of here.